Welcome everyone. We'll have a yoga practice focused on the inner experience of neither clinging nor resisting. How do we get into that place where we're not wanting things to be different and we're not wanting them to stay the same. We're neither clinging nor resisting, neither grasping nor averting. That quality in yoga would be called equanimity and the Sanskrit word for that is upekshanam. I like this sort of phrasing in English, like I'm not needing it to be different. I'm not needing it to stay the same. I'm not clinging for either one of those things. So we have this sort of open palm, this gesture of openness rather than of clinging like that. We're also not resisting. We're not pushing something away. These are teachings in yoga that have been around for thousands of years. So if we think that our personal generation has the greatest stress and therefore these are difficult teachings, they are 3000 years of teachings and we can consider that they've been relevant for that long. So it can be helpful to us even today. So go ahead and rest your hands in your lap. You're welcome to close your eyes and just start with an upright seat. You could picture yourself in the center of a pendulum with the mind swinging left to right, maybe even between clinging and aversion that the mind is able to come back to center. were to picture a pendulum that swings in fact, you could imagine that it has probably swung pretty far in each direction at some point in your process, in your journey. So you know that if a pendulum were left undisturbed, it would eventually swing to center and it will become still. We wanna picture that quality of stillness or of equanimity in the center. Picturing something and having your imagination on board is an important part of your yoga practice. At the same time, it can be helpful to have really tangible things to do. And so what we're gonna do now is use a physical action to bring in the possibility that that stillness from craving or resisting, from clinging or reacting, that that stillness is something you can feel. So please take the arms out to the side, turn your palms face up. And as you stretch the chest and heart open, palms up, rotate your thumbs down towards the space behind. You're gonna feel the shoulder blades come into the heart and then inhale, raise your right arm and exhale, side bend to your left. Keep the right hip grounded. Notice the breath coming along the right hemisphere of your body. And then use your exhale and your right low belly to raise yourself up to center, raise both arms. Inhale, open the arms wide, stretch out on the horizon. Imagine you're clearing out the space for your equanimity to exist. So the pendulum can't come in and knock you on the head left to right. And then inhale, raise the left arm up and side bend to your right. 
Keep the left hip grounded to the best of your ability. And breathe along the left hemisphere of your body. And again, connect to the lower belly. Exhale, bring yourself up. Raise your right arm alongside your left arm. Inhale, open the space of evenness or equanimity or expansiveness, left to right. And then exhale, hands to your heart, come to center. Okay, let's repeat. Inhale, raise both arms. Let's do hands shoulder width apart. Exhale, side bend to your left, kind of kula. Breathe into the right hemisphere of your body. Okay, exhale, rise up, use your right low belly to lift up to center, raise your left arm near your right. And then inhale, come over to your left side. Exhale, root into your left hip, your left shin, your left thigh. With your next exhale, raise up to center, raise your right arm alongside of your left arm. And then inhale to open the space that is yours for your mind and your body. And exhale your hands to your heart, come to center. And same thing again, but now one breath less on each side. So we're gonna feel the, the way the trunk has to support, especially from the pelvis and the sense of center here. So inhale, raise up. Exhale, side bend left. Inhale. Exhale, rise up. Inhale, side bend right. Exhale. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, side bend left. Breathe in. Exhale, rise up. One more time. Inhale, side bend right. Exhale. Inhale, rise up. And exhale to open. Okay, bring your hands to your heart. And notice how even a few breath cycles, a simple movement left to right, what's happening now to the pendulum between craving and aversion, grasping and resisting. And then release your hands and let's take these two blankets as they're folded right now and put them, they're gonna go under the hips. So these lie on your back with your knees bent to start. And that means that the blankets are probably gonna be under your knees first. Let me just scooch my water glass. Okay, so when you first lie down, then you're gonna scoot the blankets under the hips. So pick up your hips and slide the blankets under you could also use a yoga bolster for that purpose. So two blankets or a bolster. Okay. Take the arms out into a little T-shape like so. And then as you exhale, squeeze your knees in towards your chest without your hands. Inhale, drift the knees up towards the ceiling. They just point kind of straight up. Exhale, squeeze your knees in towards your chest using the lower belly, the same region of the body that you were using to stabilize in side bending. So inhale, knees point towards the ceiling. Exhale, squeeze your knees towards your chest. Once more. 
So you're, you're using the lower belly to move the legs like this, particularly on the exhale as you squeeze the breath out, also tone deep inside the lower belly. Now keep the right knee in close and stretch your left leg out on the floor. And it's possible that you're not gonna be able to straighten your left leg right away, or maybe even at all. So what's happening is the hip flexors on the left leg, you're stretching through there. At the same time, I would like you to keep your right knee close in towards your chest. Reach from your left heel. Think of the back side of your leg, left leg is getting longer. When you exhale, snug your right knee in towards your chest so you're helping to squeeze the breath out that way. One of the reasons that we can find ourselves on that pendulum moving between craving and aversion is that we have these long held patterns in the body. And you might think of some of those patterns as moving up and down the vagus nerve from the gut to the brain. It's a very fast messenger. And so as you exhale to squeeze the right thigh to the chest, think of also kind of massaging the belly and reminding yourself that during yoga practice, you get to slow down that pendulum. You might even use a phrase like this, you could say, neither cr craving, nor resisting, neither seeking, nor averting, just breathing, sensing, being. And neither clinging, nor resisting, neither craving, nor averting, simply breathing, sensing, and being. And with your next exhale, raise your left knee up to meet your right knee. Bring both knees to the chest. And then holding the back of your left leg, start taking the right leg out. And as you go towards the right leg, possibly straightening, reach through the back of your heel, like the back of the leg is getting longer. Bring your gaze to center. And then let the breath and your body be your guide. So you could even say to yourself during the inhale, neither clinging, nor resisting. As you exhale, neither craving nor averting. Simply breathing, sensing, and being. You exhale like a little squeeze of the belly. It's kind of a chance to slow down, to give your body a hug as it were, to let the messages from the vagus nerve be messages of like equanimity or peace. Simply breathing, sensing, being. And then exhale, raise your right knee up. Let both knees come to the chest. And then we're gonna keep the blankets under the hips and please touch your feet down to the floor. And let the pelvis and the belly relax. Right now your pelvis is very slightly inverted compared to your heart. And that means that for some of us, it's gonna be easier to breathe into the lower belly or to feel like the breath 
reaches the lower abdomen. Cross your right ankle over your left knee and press the right knee open. Let's imagine the right knee is a little bit like a telescope. You're reaching from your hip out towards your knee. In this process, as you're breathing, sensing, simply being, whatever sensations are in the body are also allowing them to be there. Not in a kind of dissociated or disconnected way, but we're not clinging for a sensation to be different. We're not avoiding or resisting a sensation that's uncomfortable. We want to tune into it. Neither clinging nor resisting, neither craving nor averting. We give our attention to what is happening. Simply breathing, sensing, and being. Now raise up your hips. So you're going to bring the left knee and your right ankle towards your chest. And one of the benefits of being up on the blankets like this is that gravity supports this twist and you're less likely to have your shoulders kind of getting pulled off the floor to reach with your hands. Less likely to have the chin poking up towards the sky or the ceiling. Now, as you find the sensations of your right hip, think again of you're squeezing the belly a little bit in this position. So offering to the vagus nerve, this super highway of information from the gut to the brain, just offer this chance for it to slow down. To sense that in this moment, you are not being swung about by a pendulum of craving or aversion. You could even say to yourself, breathing in, neither clinging nor resisting. Breathing out, neither craving nor averting. Breathing in, simply breathing, sensing, and being. And then let's release the left foot back down, right foot back down. Notice what happens with the breath and the lower belly. Now cross your left ankle over your right knee. And as you press the left knee open, think about like a telescope. You're going to telescope your leg from your hip to your knee. And these sensations might be unusual, might be kind of a weird configuration for a stretch, something you might not do very often, but there are these very important hip flexor muscles that are surrounding the outer hip and across the front of your hip towards your thigh into your quadriceps. We also have these upper inner thigh muscles that are, some of them are very small, we may not even realize that they're acting on the pelvis in any one situation. So again, towards all the sensations, we wanna give this attitude. We don't need the sensation to be different. We know it's not gonna stay the same. We're giving our full attention without pressuring or manipulating anything. In that inner attitude, then 
pick up your legs and what you're gonna do is squeeze your right knee and your left ankle towards your chest. Take the left hand between and the right hand around. And if you can smile at the sensations in your left hip. They weren't put there to annoy you. Remember simply breathing, sensing, being. Breathing in, not clinging, not grasping, no craving, not clenching. And breathing out, not resisting, nor reacting, nor averting. Simply being with. And as you next exhale, touch your right foot down, left foot down. And again, pause to notice that the breath may come more easily into the lower belly. And one of the really important things about that is that it's a signal to your vagus nerve, to your overall sense of the pace and speed of the inner life. It's a signal that when the breath touches down low, you are more at home in your body. There is greater safety to be there at home in your body. And what we're gonna do is lift the hips a few inches and slide the blankets out to one side. Lower your hips back down. And please roll to your side. and come up to kneeling or sitting, whatever you prefer. Right. Now we're gonna do a practice. To, so that's really the lower hemisphere of the body we're working with there. So let's bring in again, the upper hemisphere of the body. So we'll come over to a pose called table pose, which is also a quadruped position. As you come to your hands and knees, place the knees so that they are comfortably hip distance apart and a couple inches back behind your hips. The hands can be shoulder width apart. And then step your right hand well forward of your left hand. Press the fingertips down. And as you reach your hips back, touch the left elbow to the floor. Relax the weight of your head. And think of rotating your right tricep kind of down towards the floor. So your shoulder blade is wider on your rib cage. Reach the right hip back and let's bring the breath into the right hemisphere of the torso. And try to notice if there's a sense that the breath is able to reach the lower pelvis or if there's any particular resistance there, you could give some presence to that. You could give attention to it. Not asking it to change, but with an attitude of kind of getting to know it. And press your left hand down and let's float the right hand back to table pose. Take the left hand forward, reach your hips back, touch the right elbow down, relax the weight of your head and rotate your left tricep down towards the floor. As you're reaching back with the left hip, lengthen the left side of your waist. And check to see if the breath feels welcomed in the lower abdomen. 
or if it doesn't just be present again to whatever resistance or sort of obstacle might be there. And then as you next inhale, press into your right hand, float your left hand back, and then bring yourself to kneeling or sitting, whatever's more comfortable for you. I know that not everyone's knees bend completely like this, but come into a pose where you could sense now you've activated some movement in the lower body and also in the upper body. What is the speed of your pendulum now? Case of the pendulum. Now I'd like us to take these two blankets and put them on the floor horizontally on your mat. So across the mat this way. And then reach for your two blocks, please. Earlier we were stretching the psoas muscle and also giving some attention into the vagus nerve. And we're going to be heading in that direction again. So let's put the knees up on the blankets. Step the right block in, right foot forward, and then put the right block on the outside of your foot again. And go ahead and come down with the blocks and hands and with your hips. So in other words, instead of holding the hips back like this, lower your hips down and put your body weight into your hands, your arms, your right shin, right foot, right thigh. And with the left leg behind you, you can point the toes or you can have them flex. It's really entirely up to you. You should ask your kneecap what it prefers. Okay, now notice that there is some pressure of the right thigh against your abdomen. So when you breathe in, the breath has to go into the side and the back of the waist. And picture that the pace of your breath here is kind of notifying the pace of the vagus nerve. As if you had a highway, a super highway there, and you were kind of putting a speed limit on it. Of course, you might feel the left hip flexors are stretching, maybe even quite a bit. So bring this attitude of neither clinging nor resisting but giving the simplicity of your attention to those sensations. And then tuck the left toes under and press down into your right heel to straighten your left leg. So now you're in the pose that we call the basic lunge where your hands are on either side of your front foot and the right knee presses a little bit against the right arm, press your right heel down against the floor. Great, and then inhale, straighten both legs, whatever amount your hamstrings allow for. And it's okay to make the blocks taller if you need to. As you breathe into your right leg, it's okay to consider bowing the torso over your right thigh, whatever amount of flexibility you would have there. And for some of us, we won't have as much flexibility as, as others. And some of that is genetic. Some of it is hydration or the activities that we do or even our nutrition or our sleep. So don't compare your flexibility to anybody else's, but also invite your flexibility to be restored if it's been a little bit, um, if you felt tighter in some places in your body. And slowly bend your right knee. And as you come back into this position here where the right foot is flat on the floor, step your left foot over the blankets and then take the right foot back behind the blankets and bring your right knee down so that we're gonna come to the first position like we did on the other side. Let the hips come a little bit forward and put your body weight into your left heel and your left foot and support yourself adequately with both blocks. Let the breath come down as it's able to down into the pelvis. 
Notice the speed of your breath, the pace of your nervous system. Noticing you, of course, will have strong sensations in some places. You may have areas that feel really um, tender or surprising. So bring the attitude of not clinging, not resisting, but the fullness of your attention to whatever's happening. Curl the right toes under and straighten your right legs. You're going to lift your knee from the blankets. Press firmly down into your left heel. Your left knee might be against your left arm there. As always, make any small adjustments that you need to. So if you do find a sensation that you're doing your best to be thoughtful about, but it still has a, like a strong reaction, of course, you're gonna modify the pose in whatever way you have to. Let's inhale and straighten the left leg. And you could exhale and bow over your left thigh. And with whatever you're sensing on the inside, notice how you're relating to it. So the breath is kind of like a pace setter right now for your nervous system. And that pendulum image could be how you think of your nervous system. Your next inhale, press into both hands and arms. Let's make them straight and strong. And then bend your left knee. Notice that your foot is prepared for the other foot to step up and to join it. So place both feet now so they're hip distance apart. This is called Uttanasana. Relax the weight of your head. To the extent that you're able to consider deeply relaxing the lower belly. What is the pace of the breath now and kind of the speed of your pendulum or your nervous system? And then please shift your hands to your hips and rise up to standing. When you come up to stand, find your mountain pose, relax your arms. Lengthen up through the crown of your skull. Stand in your full height and imagine if you were actually a pendulum. Is it swinging wildly or becoming more centered? Take a wide stance on your yoga mat. So with the wide stance, about one leg length apart, we don't need the blankets, we will want the blocks. Great, so let's take the arms out to the side like we did earlier. Inhale the arms wide. Rotate your palms up so the thumbs go down and the shoulder blades will touch the upper back a little bit. And then inhale, raise your right arm up and exhale, side bend to your left. Breathe in along the right hemisphere of the body. Keep your right heel grounded. And when you're opening to the inner body, think of it as a chance to get to know yourself better, not a chance to torture yourself in any way. And then exhale, rise up, raise your left arm up to meet your right. Inhale, reach up. And exhale, side bend to your left. Breathe in as you root down through your left heel and into the left side of the torso. And 
And then as you next exhale, follow the strength of your exhale to rise up, raise both arms. Inhale to open. And then we're gonna exhale, bow forward. Come down, you can place your hands on the blocks or on the floor, whatever is your preference. Relax the weight of your head and start noticing again the pace of the breath, the pace of your nervous system. And then raise up with your heart. Let's put the hands on the blocks. Walk your blocks forward. Reach your hips back. So this is a much more spacious position. And in the spaciousness of it, I'd like you to press your feet down and apart as if you were stretching the mat between your feet. Energize your legs. Reach the arms forward. Be determined about the fingers going over the far edge of the block, like you're giving yourself some traction. And then notice the, the kind of allowance or permission you have in the belly to receive the breath. Do two more smooth and deep breath cycles. And then walk your hands and your blocks back towards your feet. Raise your hands to your hips and rise up and stand up. And we're going to go heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe. Come into mountain pose. Let the arms dangle and sense yourself arriving in the present moment again. If you were a pendulum, what's happening now? They're clinging nor resisting, neither craving nor averting. Simply breathing, sensing, being. I'd like you to put the two blocks aside and reach for the chair. Uh, this practice will need a chair. And then come down with your two blankets also. So with the vagus nerve, if you picture it like it's, it's um, responding to you and also to your sense of the world, your, your inner gut is responding to the things that are around you. That's where we get things like craving, clinging, grasping, wanting things to be different. We also get aversion, resistance, wanting things to go away. Well, it is said that 85 to 95 percent of the messages are going from the gut to the brain. Well, that leaves five to 15 percent of the messages to send from the brain back down to the gut. And we can do that with our words like simply breathing, sensing, being. We also send messages with the breath, the pace of the breath. So you're kind of developing a relationship with your vagus nerve right now this bagel highway. So I'd like you to fold the blanket as I was doing, and I should say, so it came out of the storage fold like this. This is my storage fold like that. So then I'm opening it. I should have spoken about it, but I didn't. And then I'm gonna fold it long side to long side, and I'm gonna do that twice like that. Okay, now the edge of the chair is going to be for the feet initially, and then for the shins, and the blankets are for the torso. One of the difficulties of holding the blankets like this is as we roll onto them, you could roll off the other side by mistake. So come down carefully like this. You place yourself near to the edge of the blankets. You lie down. 
And you have to kind of roll yourself in place so that you didn't roll off the other side. And then untangle your clothing. There we go. Um, so what we're going to do is put the sole of the feet on the front of the chair like this. It's a stretch for the inner groin. It's a invitation for the pelvis to open. But as we do this, let's also take a little piece of blanket and curl it like an inchworm. Give it a curl under your neck. And take the arms so they go down alongside your torso. Palms could be face down or up. Face down is more grounding for your nervous system. And palms face up tends to be a little bit more about optimism. Let's see if you can sense, breathe, and be. Sensing, breathing, being. So it's really simple. Doesn't mean that it's easy, but it's a very simple intention. So that the pace of your breathing is influencing the pace of your pendulum. It might be possible to greet any one sensation that you find difficult. Could you greet it with a little bit more kindness or acceptance, not resisting it? And of course, if any sensation is there actually telling you that you ought to modify the position, that's very important to recognize and to honor. on the lower belly, just enough to stabilize the pelvis and slide your feet over the chair seat. So the knees are gonna be supported at the front of the chair. You may have to adjust where the chair is. And then let your body come to resting and integrating. So this last part of class is for integration. You can imagine that your body is getting um, a recalibration, right? You're, you're getting reorganized inside and it's happening for you. You don't have to think about it. the breath to be really relaxed. We're not making any effort in that regard either. Simply resting, simply being.
to support the process of this kind of rest where your vagus nerve will get the message from above and from below. I'd like you to relax the space between your eyebrows, smooth out your forehead. Soften the corners of your eyes, relax your temples. Relax the bridge of your nose up near your eyes. Soften the space under your eyes, over your cheeks. They relax where the nostrils meet your upper lip. So that spot there can also soften. As you're softening the upper lip, travel out to the hinge of your jaw and relax the lower jaw from the upper jaw. Invite your tongue to be deeply at ease at the bottom of your mouth. the throat and down around the front and the sides and the back of your neck. The vagus nerve is the 10th cranial nerve. Let's picture how the throat is also involved here and deeply relax your throat. Soften also your heart. Relax your lungs, your shoulders. Allow this intentional ease to come down as a messenger into the belly, into the gut. And with this offering, neither clinging nor resisting, not craving nor averting, simply breathing, sensing, 
Muy bien. Okay, so the vagus nerve now and how it's sending the 85 to 95% messages from the gut to the brain. And the pace of the nervous system is something that you can have some influence with. So deeply relax the solar plexus, the abdomen, the skin over the floating ribs, and down towards your navel and into the deep lower belly. And the inner belly and the pace of life there. Imagine again the messages going now from the vagus nerve up towards your brain. So it's a full circle. The cycle goes around, goes from the gut up to the brain. We're influencing from the brain or the mind down to the gut, and that is returned back up to the brain. What we can do now is release the curved part of the blanket under your head that was right at the base of the skull. And as you imagine that the vagus nerve is sending messages up to the brain, feel the sensations of circulation returning at the base of the skull. And then wiggle your toes and your fingers. And bend the knees, they come up with your chest, we're going to roll down to one side carefully. And press down against the floor. And rise up to your seat. So that you can come into a little time for meditation. Your way to your meditation seat. And you can rest your hands in your lap and sense where is your pendulum now.
Raise your hands to your heart. Your pendulum be more graceful or more still. I feel like it's more within your leadership that you don't have to be swung about between craving and aversion, clinging and resisting. May you have more equanimity right now. Thank you, everyone. Namaste. What I'll do is I'll stop the recording so that we can be together, those of us who are here.